Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the Kerber K-Motion Warehouse Management System. K-Motion is a highly configurable and entirely scalable system capable of managing warehouses of any size from the smallest startup to the largest enterprise level operation. Unlike many warehouse management systems, K-Motion is not a development toolkit. It has best practice warehouse processes available out of the box with an advanced configuration layer on top. This approach allows warehouse processes to be adjusted to fit requirements without having to create bespoke solutions each time. As a result, implementation times and costs are low and upgrades are an easy process, as underlying bespoke work does not need to be taken into account, all without having to compromise on the advanced capability within the system. This video is a quick snapshot demonstration to provide you with an understanding of the look and feel of the system, as well as some of the processes available. Let's get started. Part one, look and feel. Let's start by looking at the web interface. This is where the management team or supervisors will run the warehouse operation. It's available on any internet enabled device and it's touchscreen compatible. So if people want to use their mobile phone or tablet, they can do so. Um, all the functionality remains the same, whether it's on the tablet or mobile phone or on the desktop. Um, so they really can run the operation whilst walking around the warehouse or even off site. We'll start off with the quick links, which is set up down the left hand side. These are configurable links to any area of the system. So if, for example, you're the overall warehouse manager or an executive, you're able to see all the areas of the system. You'll have linked here exactly what you want to see. So in this example, I've got products, inventory, receipt, replenishment, picking, and some analytics. If, for example, perhaps you were the warehouse supervisor and you were handling the receiving area, it may be that you just have a receiving element inventory and products. And likewise, if you're handling product picking, you may want to have just a picking icon. So it's designed to be very simple and easy to use. To set up a quick link, you can navigate to any area of the system. Click this button up the right hand side and click add page quick link. This will take you through to a separate menu where you can give it a name, select an icon, hit the save button, and we've now got our quick link. Alternatively, you can access the quick links menu on the top right hand side. This allows you to manage your quick links. Next up, let's take a look at the main menu. The main menu is fully searchable and this makes it very easy to find functionality or settings as you wish to change them. For example, if I type in the word bin, You'll see it'll navigate me to the relevant part of the system and allow us to change the bin rules. If I wanted to look at the word picking, again, it will navigate me to the relevant area of the system and allow me to change the processes within the picking configuration. This quick search menu really allows people to get used to the system easily and identify functionality and move around the system without necessarily having to have in-depth training. This allows people to accept the system easier and allows better use of all the functionality. We also have spaces. This effectively holds open multiple pages within the WMS at any one time. This allows you to move quickly and easily around the system. Even when people have come up to speak to you and asked you to take a look at something quickly, you know that your page will still be open behind it. So for example, if I was looking at orders and someone came up and asked me to check out perhaps something on the replenishment side. I could then look at the replenishment side, select replenishment. But I know that if I click orders again, it'll come back up. We also have this alarm functionality up here. This is effectively push, push notification um, of, of any sort of alert that you wish to see. Generally, we use used to identify any receipts or changes to receipts um, or any cycle counts that are inaccurate. And this basically allows you to quickly and easily see if something's not as it should be. There's also various online help available, so you really can get used to using the system. Part two, receiving. Okay, let's take a look at the receiving side of the system. This is my receiving screen. It has a list of all my POs, but similarly containers could be used or 
or even um, advanced shipping notifications could be used to identify certain inbound deliveries. It's important to note that all the grids within the system can be modified and columns can be added at any point. So I can drag and change, change the layout of the grid. I can add and remove columns easily. So it's very easy to set up the view as, as per your requirements and then save it as your configuration. You'll also notice along the top, we have a series of statistics which show more information about the orders that are in the table below. This is particularly useful when filtering orders. So for example, if I was to filter by status being received, we'll see the statistics update at the top of the screen. We also have a quick search functionality up here, which just allows you to search in another way, in a much faster way. So let's take a look at one of these POs. So on this PO, I can see it's uh, currently sitting in a status not received. This will automatically update as soon as the item has been received. It does not need to wait until all items have been received. It updates in real time uh, based on the scanner. I can see header line detail and I can also see the two lines that are coming in. So I have medium blue balloon and large white balloon coming in. So two different products. I can also drill through to the product itself and see some more information around it. I drill it further. So I can see for this, this product in particular, I currently have no stock in inventory. I can also run through and see things like what my open order lines, closed order lines, open receipt lines, closed receipt lines. You can see volumetric data and other information around, around the product itself. I can see information around the barcode details. K-Motion is capable of handling multiple units of measure and multiple barcodes can be held against each unit of measure. This is particularly useful if you're using multiple pack sizes, um, pallets, um, you're breaking down inners, picking units as well as cases. You can, the system can also handle serial numbers, batches, and a variety of different attributes. Let's start off by receiving this purchase order. I'm now going to load up a scanning screen. Let's start by logging in. Once I've logged in, you'll see that I've got a variety of different options here. This is the supervisor's login, so I have all options in the system available. And you'll see there's quite a lot of functionality available. Obviously, not all users will want to see this many options. So for most customers, we reduce this down to a certain type of permission. This allows you to have certain types of options available for certain types of employees. So for example, if you had a agency worker, you may just want them to have the picking option. If you had someone working on receipt, you may want them to have the receiving and stock location options. Let's start by receiving this purchase order. So I'll go into my receiving menu. Again, you'll see a variety of different options available. It's important to remember that these are all available out of the box with no configuration required. Let's click on regular receiving. At this point, I could easily search for the order or if I, if I was the manager and I wanted to assign the particular order to the individual, I could do that and that would come through in my assigned list. But in this instance, I'm just going to start by receiving this purchase order. So the system has found the purchase order. It's given me an overview of where it's coming from, how many lines are on the system, and how many units are there to be received. Is this OK? I'm going to confirm this. So at that point, the order is in my queue. And it's important to mention that multiple people can receive a single PO in K-Motion and multiple POs can be received by one individual. This allows you to have multiple POs in front of you on the receiving dock and allow you to just work through in any order and the system will incrementally count how, many, how much stock's been received and update the records. Let's start receiving this PO. I click the start button first of all and it's asking me to scan the first product. Obviously this is a demonstration environment so I'm unable to scan the product in front of me but we can take a look at what the order is and what, what products are on it. You'll notice as I've moved into the purchase order, the status is already updated to being received. This shows that the system's constantly talking to each other and all the scanners are constantly synced. 
So let's scan the first product. It presents me with a view of what the product is. It tells me there are 800 on order. I've currently received none of them and it's asking me to confirm the pack size. I'm going to say that this is coming in in packs of 50. So it calculates based on 800 being ordered that we should have 16 packs. I'm going to confirm that. So I now have 16 packs of 50 on a pallet. It's asking me if I want to apply case labels. This is particularly useful if your product is not labelled as it arrives into your warehouse. This is an opportunity to print multiple labels for the SKU so that you can label them and easily identify them as they move around the warehouse. I'm going to skip this step. It's now asking me to confirm which bin I would like to move this product into. In more advanced warehouses, directed put-away can be utilised. This is where the system will follow a series of logical steps to calculate the optimum location for product to be put away in. In this, in this demonstration, I'm going to simply instruct the system where I've put the product. I'm going to first put this product into a bulk pallet location, i.e. a non-pickable area. I scan the bin, and we can now see the products being moved into that location. If we look back at the purchase order, we can see that the quantity received has been updated. And if we look at the product itself, we can see that we now have stock in inventory. We can also see a record of who put it there. There is a log behind everything in the system. So all transactions are recorded, so there's full traceability. This is particularly useful when tracking down errors or in instances where analytics is required. Let's carry on receiving this purchase order. So I return to my handheld. This time, instead of scanning the product, I'm going to ask it to tell me what I've got left. So I click show remaining, and it's telling me that I need to still receive some large white balloons. So I can select that large white balloon. It's asking me again what the quantities per pack are. And in this instance, I'm going to receive them in as packs of five. So I've got 120 packs. I don't need any case labels, and it's asking me which bin I'd like to put them away in. So it's also important to mention at this point that some customers prefer to have two-step put away. This is where you receive into a receiving location, and then a separate task is, is put on the system for a user to move the product from the receiving location to the put away location. It's important to mention in this system that all, all the processes can be intertwined. So as soon as there's a, a product in the receiving location, an activity can be triggered to move that product to your bulk area. Let's scan this into another bulk bin. That's complete. So we've received everything in, I've completed the PO, and we can now see that there's no POs in my queue. If I go back to the management screen, hit the refresh button, we can see that the purchase order has gone blank, indicating that it's been uploaded. We'll now see on this screen that it drops off the list because it's now been received. Part three, replenishment. If we look at our outbound orders, we'll see that there are many statuses within the system for the orders. We have ready to wave. This is orders ready to be picked. We have orders being picked. We have orders that are held for replenishment. This is where stock is available in the warehouse, but it's not in a pickable location, for example, a bulk location. And we also have orders held short. Held short orders are where there's no stock available at all in the warehouse and it's waiting for stock to actually be received. There are many other statuses, but these are the main ones. So let's have a look at the replenishment. So I'm gonna have a look at an order. I'm gonna see what needs replenishing. So looking at this order, we can see that there's a product required. Uh, it's balloon 03, large white balloon. We require 20 of these items and it's currently held replenishment. This will automatically create a replenishment task in the background of the system. 
So I've navigated here to the replenishment menu. If I refresh this, we'll see the replenishment tasks have automatically been created for these products. The quantity is looking at the demand required for the product. So if, a 50, if there's 50 on order, 50 would be replenished. For some customers, we require a more advanced form of replenishment, which we call advanced replenishment. This calculates the demand, but also forecasts the amount of stock required to fulfill a certain amount of days on hand. It will proactively search for opportunities to replenish, calculate when stock may run out in advance, and proactively replenish. This means you get fewer stock outs. So let's start replenishing these items. If I go to my scanning gun, I move to the stock locator screen and click let down stock. This is the functionality to take stock from a bulk location. You can see there's many options by which to group it. So for example, if you're working in a specific zone or uh, perhaps you only want to have the ones that are assigned to you, um, there are lots of different options. Again, with this, these, all of these screens, we can reduce these down just to the options required for the individual. So let's start by clicking by group. And it's asking me, where am I? So the replenishments are based on your location. Obviously, if you're um, covering a smaller area, you may want to uh, reduce that down. Or if you're covering certain priority orders, priority replenishments, you may look at a certain group of priority pre replenishments. But in this instance, I'm saying, I want to replenish everything in the warehouse, but I'm at bin B001A. So what's the nearest replenishment required? So we can see the first replenishment required is the medium blue balloon, which is this item here. So it's asking me to scan the bin. So I scan the bin, 134A, scan the product, balloon, O2. It's now asking me to retrieve three packs of 50. So at this point, I could retrieve more stock if I wanted to. So for some customers, they want to replenish a full pallet each time. Um, you can do that. And again, with advanced replenishment, it would have calculated the optimum amount to replenish by. So let's get three packs out. So I confirm that. And now I can put the stock away. So it's recommending uh, me to put into B052A. Now I could choose to follow this instruction or I could choose another bin if I wanted to. Again, there's rules around what, whether this is allowed or not. In this instance, I'm going to choose a different bin. That stock's now been moved and replenished. So let's go back to our replenishment screen. We should see that that item has dropped off the list. The replenishment will then take me through to the next replenishment required. So this is two step put away. In this instance, you replenish one product at a time. But for other types of customers, they may prefer, prefer to replenish multiple products at the same time. And that's available within the system. So you collect multiple products on one replenishment run, and then you put them away in sequence. If we return to our orders screen, so our picking orders, we should now see if we hit the refresh button, it will have identified that some products been moved into the picking area and those orders are now able to be picked. You can see the order changed from held replenishment to ready to wave. If we look into the order itself, we can now see that the stock has been allocated. This is the stock that we replenished. And if we look at the product, we can now see that we've got some stock in a picking location, and we've also got some stock in a bulk location. We can also see the movements, all of the movements backwards and forwards within the system. So we can see who moved the product, when and who did what. Part four, picking. 
Next, we're going to pick some orders. Let's have a look at our outbound orders screen. So looking at our outbound orders screen, we have multiple orders ready to waive. We could either allocate this to an individual or we could pick multiple orders simultaneously. Um, and we can also have an automated process which automatically sends these orders out to the pickers. In this instance, I'm going to select a couple of orders and then pick them simultaneously. But before I do that, I want to show you some of the other functionality on this screen. So one of the use useful functions within this screen is the pivot charts op option. This is another way of showing the information within this table and allows you to easily identify certain orders that are required. So for example, we may want to look at the number of orders by date requested and what their statuses are. So if we look up here, we can see we have orders by required date. This shows us along the top the status and the day in which they are going out the door. So we can see that we've got three orders ready to waive for today's date. I can then click on those, hit apply to work center, and we'll see that the grid automatically gets updated. We can then utilize the values at the top to see more information about the orders. So for example, we can look at estimated labor, we can look at the cube, we can look at the total weight, and this can all make help us to make decisions about how to pick these orders. Again, as I said, you can automate this process. So let's pick some of these orders. So I'm going to select a few orders and I'm going to assign them to my scanning gun. So I select handheld user, that's my login on the scanning gun. And we can now see they're assigned to me. So I could assign them as one batch. This will load them individually onto my handheld and allow me to start picking them. Let's move to the handheld. Let's select picking. Again, there are multiple different picking options. I'm just gonna show you the very simple regular picking. I'm working in all zones. I don't want to use the start bin. And I'm going to have a look at my assigned orders. We can now see those three orders are assigned to me. So I'm going to load the first order. We can see it's an e-commerce customer, one line, one unit, one cube. Load my second order. Confirm that as well. And you can see I've now added those two into my stack of orders. So I load my third order, three lines, five units, five cube. So let's start this pick. So we hit the start button. The system will then look at all the orders, calculate the optimum walking path around the warehouse to pick those items. It'll then print off labels for each of the cartons for the items to be picked into. Again, these processes can be changed if they don't fit with your warehouse operation. And it'll then ask you to move around the warehouse and pick each item into the box in turn. So it's asking me to go to bin A111A. It's asking me to scan product balloon O2. So I scan the product, obviously being a demonstration, I haven't got the product in front of me, but we can type the code in. It's now asking me to scan the cart and it wants me to scan it into. And it's asking me to confirm the quantity. It wants one single. The next location it wants me to travel to is bin A124A to scan balloon 04. So I scan the product of balloon 04. It's now asking me to scan this carton. You'll notice that each of these carton numbers have a large uh, one number in the brackets. This is called the big number and this is basically a number that's displayed on the ticket to easily identify the order rather than having to search for the individual reference numbers. It's asking me to confirm the quantity, one single. The system is also telling me that I also need to put some of that product into another carton. Remember, we're picking multiple orders at the same time. We've got multiple cartons on our pick trolley in front of us. I'm now gonna scan the carton, box 34. It's now asking me to confirm the quantity, 
five singles. And that's it, simple as that. The orders have been picked. It's now asking me if I want to start picking the next wave. I'm gonna exit this now. Now those three orders have been picked. You can see that they've moved into a different status waiting for reports, so that means some paperwork being currently printed for them. You could then have a shipping step at the end of that process, or it could move to a staging lane. It could have an end of line process where it's relabeled or repackaged. Basically any process can be configured um, to handle the picks after they've been completed. Part five, analytics and dashboards. So throughout this demonstration, I've shown you a lot of manual processes. The system is really designed to be a fully automated process with minimal input from your managers and supervisors. Really, they shouldn't be having to look at your receipt screens or your outbound order screens to identify which orders need to be picked. The system will simply identify the orders on their behalf and send them out to the people working in the warehouse or the automation systems or robotics. As a result, we set up a dashboard for each of the users. These dashboards relate to the specific part of the warehouse operation that they work on. For example, if you're in charge of the receipt area, you may have a receiving dashboard. If you're a picker, you may have a picking dashboard. If, for example, you're the overall warehouse supervisor, you may want to have a general view across the whole operation. Kmotion has a tool called Pulse. This system is very easy to use. It's a live analytics tool, so it accesses the data live and provides a very easy platform to create your own dashboards. This is a dashboard we made for an overall view of the warehouse, so it gives us a taste of everything that's going on. We can see the shortages, we can see which orders are ready to dispatch, we can see which orders are ready for picking. We can also see how accurate our receipt is. We can see which orders have been completed on time in full, and a variety of other information such as space utilization, receive lines by user. The nice thing about these dashboards is that you can drill into the information behind them. So for example, if I wanted to take a look at the orders that are ready for picking, I can double click on the order and we can see that the screen loads up. It's very easy to create new visualizations for the data. We click the edit mode and we can simply add a new panel. There's a huge amount of predefined KPIs and analytics available within the system. Other than these dashboards, there's also a large amount of other reports available that could be used to dig into far more detail. We also have a business intelligence tool that allows a much more advanced form of analytics and includes elements such as 3D warehouse modeling, Q&A functionality, and very advanced labor analysis. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. Obviously, we've shown you some very basic processes within the system today. If you'd like to see how your operation can be improved by the Kerber Kmotion system, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us at Bloom One.